Hello everyone from New Market, Ontario in Canada. I'm speaking to you from my hometown, which is a 35 minute drive north of Toronto, a city on Lake Ontario, one of the Great Lakes. My name is William Lodring, uh, Billy Lotterung, as I am known in South Africa. And yes, I still do speak Afrikaans. Ek praat nog Afrikaans. Some of you may know that a long time ago, I was a student at the University of Pretoria in the Fine Arts Department, where I taught for some time afterwards as well. After that, I was in broadcasting for a decade at Radio Set Africa and then moved to Canada. When Mike Edwards, my former professor and colleague, uh, took a sabbatical one year, I stood in to manage the sculpture department at Tux. It was a huge responsibility as I was young, and I think my main concern was to keep it intact for the masses' return. I'm happy to say uh, we are still speaking to each other, or rather, he is still speaking to me after that year. Uh, I recall a few important conversations with Mike after his return from North America. I was still a young artist seeking direction. One such meeting was in a restaurant in downtown Pretoria when he seriously talked about the future of art in South Africa, and also my future. I realized that day uh, Mike had become a mentor to me, and I remained close to him. And now, many decades later, this man has made such an impact on me that I can hardly write my own life story without crediting him for many of my attitudes, values, and especially my work ethic. He has left important, long-lasting imprints on my psyche. I try to visit South Africa regularly once a year, and I always prioritize spending a day with Mike and Patty, whom I love and appreciate like family. In a way, it is usually a homecoming. Those pleasant lunches and talks, together with sensible advice on their farm, never forced on me but gently delivered, have become such precious memories which I have carefully documented over time. But let me talk about Mike as an artist and teacher. As sculptor professor, Mike has had an enormous influence on generations of university students. Throughout the years he taught, he was a stable inspiration always seeking to encourage and empower individuals, treating everyone exactly the same. And in this aspect, he was far ahead of his time. Mike was on the front line, the master, the sensei, bringing a long tradition of knowledge with him. And he thus provided many of us with a deeper understanding of the visual arts, which on the one hand will be one of his legacies, that he inspired many of us to seek the same. His English sense of humor is well known. When I think of it, the twinkle in the eyes always comes to mind, accompanied with his deep sense of pleasure. And then there's the laughter and the head shaking somewhat. And his distinguished velvety voice, which I hear so often in my head. His influence on my work, although I never became a fully fledged sculptor, was deep and lasting. The way he kneads clay, studying with intense focus his subject, and then applying and adding, building the gray material with masterful strokes in coils. I remember him saying he used sausages of clay, coils, to shape a portrait. And I've been fortunate to watch him create a portrait several times, such as, for example, that of uh, Professor Fleurs von Jarsfeld. There was even a day when I became a grateful subject myself and stood for hours in his studio while he sculpted my portrait. It was such an honor, I will never forget it. When Mike left the university in the 1980s, uh, a few of my young friends uh, and I went to help him set up his studios on the farm. This is where Mike and Patty would live for many years. Here he set up a successful bronze casting studio with his son Jonathan and processed and finalized 
many sculptures for himself and his peers. An example would be the horse sculptures at Sun City by Danny Diacher, who eventually became his major client. Over many years, uh, Mike produced castings with Jonathan uh, for exhibitions and monuments in New York, the Bahamas, Dubai, and many in Southern Africa. And how many of you know that Mike Edwards sculpted a large monumental relief panel for the South African War Memorial uh, at Delville Forest in Longueville, France? I traveled there to look for myself. And I assure you, the relief panel is impressive. This work might be one of his most important contributions in the service of his country. In Mike Edwards' life work, we will see many works in steel, such as the large Civita sculpture in Pretoria, and for example, its works at the University of Pretoria. They are all over the country. Recently, uh, I've seen one at the Edenvale Library in Johannesburg, uh, the Warrior II in bronze and mahogany. He also worked in wood, for example, his towers, and then combined materials. Here's a list of some important works. Tonquane 1, Bronze Abstract. Marine 1, Mixed Wood. Marine Form, Stainless Steel. Africa 2, Stainless Steel. Vinci, Stainless Steel. Shield, Brass. Growth Forms, Abstract. Jack Sander Door, Info Plan Sculpture. That was a wall sculpture. African 1, Bronze Sculpture. W3 Shield, uh, Tonquane 2 Bronze Sculpture, and many, many more. I also remember way back in the 80s, the 1980s, yes, that's a long time ago, that I helped Mike move a large wood sculpture to an exhibition of staff work at the old Marenski Gallery in uh, the University of Pretoria. We were so inspired to see that piece because of the new wood layering techniques he had applied. Mike said later, my enthusiasm absolutely made his day and the sculpture worthwhile. In this exhibition, you can see more of his ideas in wood. I'm far away from you right now, but I've seen the work in November last year when he was preparing for the show. Mike is by far one of the most important and best portrait sculptors in the country. He has worked with many models over the years, famous and unknown, children and adults, modest and important. On the extensive list, I will mention a few, such as uh, portraits of many important artists in South Africa, such as uh, Franz Klarhout, Eduard de Villa, Betty Slayer Barnard, and so on. There were also public figures like Donny Craven and Albert Bert, to name a couple, as well as justices, university rectors, lawmakers, bishops, generals, and state presidents such as C.R. Swart and Nelson Mandela. As I said before, Sylvia and I visited Mike and Patty while he was preparing for this exhibition. Taking us through his studio, he discussed with us at length his interesting subject matter, the thought process, and showed us his maquettes in wood and other materials. Again, reinforcing my understanding of this man as a thinker who never stops. In that sense, Mike is my example, and I hope to do the same. His place in South African sculpture marks him as a great artist, one of the best I know. So I invite you, ladies and gentlemen, to take a walk through the exhibition and especially have a conversation with Mike. You'll find out some interesting things. Congratulations on this excellent exhibition, Mike. <music>